All right, so our sub boxes just got bumb. All right, so all of our sub boxes just got absolutely bombarded by all the super in-depth analysis on all the high-end Ryzen CPUs and the new Navi GPUs. That's not what we're doing today. Today, we're taking what I think is the absolute sweet spot for this launch, the Ryzen 5 3600 and the Radeon 5700 XT, and we're gonna benchmark them together. Let's get into it. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. Today we're gonna to be benchmarking the brand new Ryzen 5 3600 with the Radeon 5700 XT, which is where I personally think the price to performance sweet spot is for this launch. And if you're new here and you wanna see more PC building or definitely a lot of Ryzen or Navi news, then hit the subscribe button down below and also that notification bell, that way you never miss an episode, but yeah. Let's check this combo out. All right, so for today's video, like I said in the intro, we're not gonna be wasting a lot of time introducing these parts, as I'm sure by now you've already watched a ton of other tech YouTubers content that got their parts sent directly from AMD. Just as a side note, I actually drove to Micro Center this morning at 9 a.m. when these parts first hit the shelves. There was a pretty crazy line, so if you guys could smash that thumbs up button down below, that would really appreciate it. Anyways, our testing rig today is also featuring a brand new X570 motherboard, the MSI X570A Pro, which allows us to take Take advantage of the latest features and it's running the latest BIOS version FYI. Our RAM is a 16 gigabyte kit of Corsair Vengeance RGB clocked at 3200 megahertz and all of our games are installed on a 500 gigabyte A data SSD. For today's video I'm going to be benchmarking this combination of parts in both 1080p and 1440p but just keep in mind that this setup can definitely push 4k and a lot of titles but I know a lot of gamers in 2019 still aren't on 4k so I don't want to waste anyone's time. I also felt that it was appropriate to benchmark both the 30 600 and 5700 XT at stock speeds because you can find much more in-depth overclocking analysis around the internet. Like I usually say, I like to give you guys the results that you'll see right out of the box so you don't have to worry about if I hit the silicone lottery or if you hit it. Just know that the 3600 does indeed have a little bit of headroom so that you can overclock it to 3600 X speeds, but I would personally recommend saving the 50 bucks. Another note worth mentioning is that the 5700 XT is the Sapphire Blower Style Card Edition. We only have access to this or the power color blower style, and I would highly recommend waiting for other third-party cards to release. This blower style is obviously way louder and not nearly as efficient as a two or three fan design, and the absolute only reason why I picked this up is so I can get the benchmarks out to you guys quickly. I definitely would not have done this as a consumer. With that out of the way, the first game I decided to benchmark was Fortnite, and for this one I put both the 1080p and 1440p resolution test to epic settings, and in 1080p I got an average of 127, and in 1440p I got 96. Next up was PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds in Ultra settings, and in 1080p we averaged 124, and in 1440p we were still well above our target 60 FPS mark with 87. Pretty crazy to see that this combination of parts can easily get you into 4K gaming on a title like PUBG. Following that, I tested Counter-Strike Global Offensive. This one is really going to test out our 3600 and less of the 5700 XT, and in 1080p in high settings I averaged 261, and in 1440p I got pretty much the exact same results with a 258 FPS average. The Rainbow Six Siege built-in benchmarking tool followed up next, and this one was absolutely no match for the 3600 and 5700 XT. In 1080p and Ultra settings, I averaged 264 FPS, and in 1440p and Ultra, we got 179. Getting into the tougher to run game section, Assassin's Creed Odyssey built-in benchmarking run was up next, and in 1080p and very high settings, I averaged 62, and in 1440p, we got a solid average of 55. Far Cry New Dawn followed that, and in 1080p and Ultra settings, we averaged 90 frames per second and got just under under our target 60 FPS mark in 1440p with ultra settings as well. The new Mordhau was up next. I really like this benchmark because in an online match it really tests the CPU with the huge open map and tons of players, but it also stresses the GPU because the textures are really demanding. During an online match in 1080p and ultra settings, this system averaged 116 FPS and in 1440p I got 98. And finally to wrap up this benchmarking run for today, I fired up Shadow of the Tomb Raider with DirectX 12 turned on and with the highest settings in 1080p we averaged 91 FPS and in 1440p we averaged 62. So with the results out of the way, I can confidently say that I would recommend both of these parts and they deliver pretty much exactly what I was expecting, but one thing to note is that this is definitely only for people that want a game above 1080p, 
I would really not recommend this combination of parts for the 1080p monitor. As we saw with the benchmarks, this combo is pretty much overkill in most titles in 1080p, and we got some really nice and balanced results in 1440p. In 1080p, you're putting a lot of strain on the CPU, and you're not really getting the full potential of the 5700 XT. Once we put the settings in 1440p, that's where the 5700 XT takes over most of the load, and it really shines, and it really just brings the good balance of these parts together. Even the 1% and 0.1% lows were higher in 7 of 8 games in 1440p compared to 1080p. The reason why I'm stressing this is because I think it's important to note that we are now officially in the time period where the quote unquote mid tier level PC gaming is at 1440p and almost 4K and only the super budget new hardware is geared towards 1080p. Well that wraps up my benchmarks of the Ryzen 5 3600 and the Radeon 5700 XT. As always drop a comment down below about what else you want to see with this Navi and Ryzen launch. I really really want to hear from you guys. After that, feel free to head on over to one of these two videos if you haven't seen them yet, and definitely hit that subscribe button because coming up next, the Ryzen 5 3400G and 3200G are on the way to my house. You do not want to miss that video.